Hello YouTube friends, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, The Painted South. I've really been enjoying this beautiful spring weather. I love seeing the butterflies and the bees and the hummingbirds that have been visiting our front porch. And I love beautiful, peaceful, rainy spring mornings like this one. Now we have endless projects going on inside the house and I've been trying to focus on those. However, I just couldn't help myself. I had to go buy a few plants for the front porch, even though we won't be fixing up the exterior of the house until the inside is finished. Each morning I've been simmering a natural stovetop potpourri this one is fresh lemon slices with fresh rosemary from our yard and a splash of vanilla extract. All right, so I needed a shelf for the guest room makeover. So I purchased this white pine one by 12 by eight from a local lumber yard. It cost about $20. So about $2.50 per linear foot. Now we cut the board to five and a half feet. So I'll have about two and a half feet left over for another project later on. I lightly sanded the entire board with a medium grit sanding block. And then I stained it with this Rust-Oleum wood stain in the color Provincial. Alrighty, this really is very orange, which actually will probably match the desk like I hope, but it is way too bright. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and do the other side, and then I'll definitely be going back over it with a darker stain, a dark wax, or some type of glaze to make it uh, just a little bit not so bright orange. Now this was white pine. I wanted the knots in it. I wanted it to look rustic. I did not distress it any more than it already kind of was because you're just really not going to see very much of it. So I thought, why bother? But um, yeah, I definitely want it to be a little bit darker. Actually, a lot darker. Definitely don't want it to be this orange color. So let me coat the other side and we'll go from there. Okay, I decided to get out my gel stain in aged oak. And before this is totally dried, I'm just going to go ahead, well, I already have, I'm just kind of going over it to darken it a little bit. You can see it's a lot brighter here, and it is darkening it up some. And then when this is all dry, I'll probably do another coat of this, or I may end up having to use just some paint if it, if it doesn't soak it in. I uh, probably should have waited until it was totally dry to go over it with the gel stain, but I'm very impatient, so <laughs> it is darkening it a little bit. So um, anyway, I will see what this looks like and then go from there. Either way, we're going to get it where we want it so it matches or at least semi-coordinates with the desk in the room. For the shelf, I purchased these brackets from Hobby Lobby. I purchased them when they were 50% off. I can't remember what they cost. I'm thinking $7.99 each. So basically, I think they were around $4 each. You can look on their website if you're interested in any of their metal brackets. I think they're a great deal. I always go there to buy these. And they have really pretty style. So I got these. 
and if they don't look right once I put them on the shelf they may be a little bit too small or petite so to speak too narrow just in scale they may be not quite right so if they're not I have some other ones and I may try those but I got these for the shelf so hopefully they will work and they were this brown color which I didn't like against the shelf that I made so I went ahead and painted them black with some Debbie's DIY paint and I think they look much better. You still can see some of the brown a little bit peeking through here and there, but they'll go better in the room. So I painted those and top coated those with a polycrylic to seal them in and they'll go on the shelf. Let's see if they work. And here is the finished shelf hung in place. A shelf is a super easy, low-cost project that can add so much to any area in your home. I love adding shelves for additional display surface, especially for seasonal decor. And if you don't want the actual shelf to stand out, you can just paint it the same as your wall color. This next project was a floor lamp that I purchased from a seller on Facebook Marketplace. It has a floor foot switch, which I like and I love the color and the style. So after I purchased this lamp, I realized it was supposed to have a completely different glass shade to it, like this one that I saw on a different Facebook Marketplace listing. However, mine came with a smaller mismatched one. Now I've been wanting to recreate a floor lamp planter like these Pinterest inspiration photos. However, I also wanted to keep the light option, so I decided I would try to blend the two. To start, I decided to make several embellishments using my IOD clay molds. This one is their Classic Elements mold. So I made the mistake of purchasing this air dry modeling clay at Michael's and it was not the same as the paper clay that I had used before, but I managed to make it work. It was super sticky and would not release from the molds until it had dried for several hours, even after I had dusted the molds with plenty of cornstarch. It took a lot of extra time and work, so I would just stick with the paper clay only. I decided to coat the glass shade with Mod Podge mixed with green paint as a base coat. I used Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint in the color Fancy Farm Girl. After the paint and the molds were totally dry, I glued the embellishments onto the glass shade, placing one on each side. And after the glue had dried, I went back over the entire shade with more green paint using a pouncing or stippling type technique to create texture. Next, I added my favorite glaze to darken and age the paint finish. I use this glaze on almost everything that I paint and I'll be using it all throughout this video. It just brings everything to life and gives each piece instant age and character. After the shade was glazed and completely dry, I gave it two coats of this Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Finish. I shared this wire basket in a previous haul. I purchased it at an antique store for only $3 and I placed it on top of the floor lamp first. I then added the painted glass shade and secured both with a socket ring. 
Now I will be changing out the florals on this planter lamp throughout the seasons, but for now I decided just to use this cascading greenery from Michaels. I have plenty of florals still packed away that I'll be able to find soon as I continue to unpack our boxes from our last year's move. Now I am using an LED bulb that does not get very hot so it should not affect the paint or the greenery but I will continue to monitor it and adjust the bulb as needed. I've really been loving all of the bird activity in the yard, especially around our hummingbird feeders on the front porch. Now Maxine on the other hand could care less. She'd rather roll around and play dead so she doesn't have to help me work. To help attract even more birds, I thought I could repurpose our old light fixture that was in the kitchen's dining area. Unfortunately, I didn't record how I pieced the parts back together, but I basically just played around with the pieces and created this bird feeder by adding a chain and the center that was a base to a farmhouse style cloche from Michaels. It fit perfectly inside and is removable if I need to clean it or replace it. I used this Rust-Oleum primer in a flat black as my base coat. And after it was dry, I brushed on a few highlights to bring out the detail on the arms, rim, and finial. I then gave it a few layers of a clear matte top coat. I've had these beautiful metal brackets for years and I decided it would elevate the look of the bird feeder even more if it were to hang from the scrolled piece in a nearby tree. I absolutely love how it turned out. This old rusty candle sconce I purchased for a dollar at an estate sale has become yet another bird feeder just by adding a glass light fixture shade to the post and securing it with a nut. I'll be revamping this later on, but for now it's ready for birds to come and visit. All right, so I have this really large basket. It has been destroyed by one of our cats, as you can see the handle right there. So I'm thinking I'm going to, I was gonna remove the handles, but I'm thinking that I'm going to take this outside and spray paint it black. Hopefully it will stick to this shiny paint with that um, flat black primer that I have. So I'm gonna take this outside and spray it to start with and see if it will cover all of this white and where it's been torn up and chipping off and then I think we'll just do some type of wrap around the handle so let's take this outside and spray it I decided to dry brush a light brown paint on the basket for highlights and also to create a color variation that would really warm up the basket once the dark brown glaze was applied.
Now I considered wrapping the handles in strips of fabric, but I didn't have anything on hand that would work well, so I decided to glue two types of moss to the handles using Mod Podge. In addition to the Mod Podge, I also secured the moss in place by wrapping jute twine around the handles. I thought I could use some of the muscadine vines that are all over our yard, but I ultimately decided to go ahead and use these two faux branches from Hobby Lobby instead. I love using these branches because they're bendable and really give this basket that rustic touch that I love to incorporate throughout my home decor. Now I had plans to style this basket for the guest room, but it quickly became another cat bed. This next project is nothing new. It has been done a million and one times, but I wanted to elevate this little birdhouse that I thrifted, and I also wanted to make it a color that would blend more with my style of home decor. I ended up just painting the birdhouse in neutral colors and paint that I had laying around from other projects. And while I really like how it turned out and the colors are neutral enough to work throughout the year and in any room, I kind of feel like I'm going to be repainting this at some point. As you can probably see in the background, I was working on several different projects all at once as the drying time of each one allowed me to work on others as I went along. I somehow lost the clips where I glazed and clear coated this little birdhouse, but I think it turned out pretty cute. However, I can see a new color on it, either for fall or Christmas. For the next project, I decided to paint these recently thrifted plaster sconces to use as decorative bookends. I started by coating them with leftover chalk paint that I made. One of them is kind of a cocoa brown color and the other one is a light to medium gray that I made super thick using joint compound. You could use Waverly's chalk paint in the color Fawn and Mineral for a similar look. However, I ended up adding Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint in the color Farm Fresh and Waverly paint in the color Crystal. I ended up scraping some of the paint off using my fingernail for a chippy look, but of course you could use any normal tool that you prefer. I glazed these sconces and I liked the look, but ultimately ended up layering more of the color Farm Fresh on top as well as the color Serenity Blue by Rustoleum. And then after that, I added another layer of the Java Brown Glaze and clear coated them as well. If you're not satisfied with a piece that you're painting, just let it dry and then keep layering your paint. 
I think these turned out perfect for my old world style. Okay, now so this metal pitcher was free to me when I purchased some other items off of Facebook Marketplace. I tried to get the stickers off, but there were two layers on it and they were welded onto this metal. So I tore off what I could and then I decided that I would glue down whatever was left using Mod Podge. After the Mod Podge was completely dry, I gave it a base coat of that same brown chalk paint color that I had mixed up for other projects, and I stippled it on to add texture. After it dried to add even more extreme texture, I applied a random layer of stucco. This all-purpose stucco patch is available at your hardware stores for about $10 for this 32 ounce container. I just put on some gloves and I used my hands to smear it all over since the surface was rounded. After the stucco was completely dry, I painted a thick layer of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color Chiffon Cream. So for this project, I ended up spraying it with clear coat before I added the glaze so that it wouldn't soak up the paint and make it too dark. And then I applied the glaze and after the glaze was dry, I then added another couple of clear coats on top to seal everything in. So I love how the picture turned out. It looks a little darker here than it actually is in person, probably because it's beside the bright white porch railing, but I think it looks beautiful and will go with all of my decor. This next project is a book box that I've had for many years and it was in desperate need of a refresh. I know I could have wrapped it in fabric or decoupage napkins on it or something like that, but I like to paint and so I decided that I would paint it with a coat of chiffon cream on the outside. I then added several of those clay embellishments that I had already made from the IOD mold. I used the Fix All Adhesive Super Glue from Dollar Tree to attach the embellishments to the book. Now this super glue does have a fairly strong odor, so if you use it, you're probably going to need to ventilate your workspace. After the glue and the clay were totally dry, which was the next day, I coated the clay with Mod Podge. I've had this bare chalk paint in the color Old Celadon since this past October, so I thought I would go ahead and use it on this book box upcycle. For extra dimension, I mixed chiffon cream with Old Celadon and I dry brushed the entire book box. I then clear coated this as well before the glaze and then after just like I did the picture project. Adding a glaze or a dark wax really enhances every detail on these IOD moldings. I think this fresh new look is really pretty and will be a nice touch to add to any decor vignette. And our last project for this video is another super simple one. I've had this old thrifted candlestick for quite a while now and I wanted to use it to make a pedestal bowl and I have found the perfect piece. I remembered I had this pressed aluminum bowl that I got at a local thrift store a while back and shared in a thrift haul video. 
While the metal is really pretty and would go great in so many other homes, it really clashes with the rest of my decor, so of course I decided that I would paint it in the same fashion as the rest of my projects. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you probably know that I am obsessed with vintage French country and old world European colors and finishes. So I decided to paint this piece in an aged ochre yellow color, which is one of my favorite colors to mix into my home decor, especially during the fall season. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd love to know which DIY upcycle project or thrift flip was your favorite. Even if your design style is different than mine, I hope you are inspired to give new life to some of your old decor or unused items that are laying around your house. It's so fun, it's relaxing and rewarding to work on projects like the one that I shared with you today. If you happen to recreate any of these ideas, please tag me on Instagram or send a photo to me in a private message. I would love to see anything that you create. Thank you all so much for watching and spending some time with me today. I appreciate you all so very much. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you click the notification bell and select the option all so you won't miss the next upload. Until next time, bye for now.